right. Well, that is all the housekeeping that I have to do. So without further delay, we'll move on to our next panel, who are going to be discussing the topic of playing catch up in the 5G world. How do businesses prepare for the coming changes? So again, we have with us our 5G specialist at Empleo UK, Mr. Marios Nicolaou. We also have CTO and CSA of ASEAN and Korea SP at Cisco APJ, Mr. Su Hyun Sean Wang, and the head of nation operations, rather the head of nationwide operations and the support department at AIS, Kun Wasit Watanasap, and CMO at DC Consultants and Marketing Communications, Dr. Wheat Sitiwai Kin, who will be our moderator for this session. A round of applause for our next panel. Good afternoon. I hope that this panel discussion will excite all of you because we are talking about future, which is 5G. Well, good afternoon, three gentlemen. Good afternoon. Well, first of all, we heard from Kun Marios about how the 5G is not like another G. What I heard, it will transform the entire world, and we heard about the example and the deployment in some other markets already. But let me focus upon here in the market Southeast Asia. Once people said it will transform the world, of course, and Southeast Asia, how will that impact Southeast Asia once it deployed here in our region, Kunmarios? Well, for me, Asia is the most exciting region, and I think you guys might be sometimes a little bit slow to start, but when you start, you win. So it's very exciting that, uh, I mean, just from a sheer amount of, of, of uh, demand for, for, for media, for example, and for broadband from data that I have seen, the Asian markets are very hungry, they're very mobile, they love Facebook or other social media. So in all these ways, 5G is going to help, but also in the industrial sectors that I mentioned before. Well, many people have mentioned that 5G is not purely telecommunications. However, it will have a great impact on several industries. From vertical perspective, how will that impact industries and business? Good, Marios. It's all about speed, efficiency, cost reduction, but also creating new revenue opportunities. Mm. As I mentioned, the 5G has the chance to help companies to transform their business model and to change from just selling you a one-off machine just to give you a, a good example to understand is how, the, how we buy printers, for example, right? So you buy a printer once you install it, but the model is transforming. The, the printing companies, you can be sure, they're watching your printer. They know when the printer is running out of ink, so they can be sending it to you proactively and you don't need to do nothing, and then they create a steady revenue stream for themselves. So we have a chance for a lot of good transformation. Well, in terms of doing business, we heard we are in the age of disruption and 5G will disrupt us as well as the way we do business. Kun Sean, can you share with us how will that shake the world? I would prefer to use the word shake rather than disrupt because the impact is huge. Yeah, you know, the 5G has already launched in some of the country. The first, you know, the launched country is the Korea. You know, I'm Korean, I'm, you know, the I was the, I'm involved in the designing and deploying the 5G infrastructure in Korea last year until today. And three major telco has already launched the 5G the, in Korea. And you know the number of the 5G sub subscriber is over the 1 million last week. They gather you know the 1 million 5G subscriber for last two and a half months. And we expect that the 4 million subscriber, 5G the subscriber uh, will be the over 4 million at the end of this year. This is you know, really the good, uh, no, 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 good outcome after you know, the telco launched the 5G commercial. But the problem is that there is no specific use cases from the B2B market. There's a reason that 
you know, the B2B use cases, we need a lot of the collaboration with a lot of the echo partner together. The chairman of the KT, he announced that they will make the smart factory through the 5G uh, with the Hyundai heavy industry. Hyundai heavy industry is the biggest, the, one of the biggest company for, you know, the shipyard and the vessel company. And the chairman of the KT, he mentioned that uh, they will make the smart factory with the, you know, the drone, 5G drone for the safety and security and 5G robot arm and the 5G, the, you know, the, the camera and they build a lot of the cutting edge technology for smart factory. As I mentioned that, there are a lot of vendor in there. The camera, the drone, and robot arm, and big data analytic engine, a lot of things. It is reason that the fancy, the 5G use case for B2B, it takes some time. I assume that it takes you know, more than the three or two, the three, four years. Well, as far as Southeast Asia is concerned, apart from the 5G deployment itself, in terms of different industries, are we ready? I refer to we because we are in Thailand. Huh? Are we ready in order to maximize the impact or the ability of the 5G in terms of business and industry? Yeah, I think so. You know, the, I heard that you know, the, there are a lot of the manufacturing in the, you know, Thailand. And also, I saw a lot of you know, the great the media the company here in Thailand. Uh, I think the Thailand is well ready to launch the 5G commercial and also enjoy the 5G technology with a lot of the innovative technology as I mentioned that. I'm sure you know that we can you know the enjoy the lot of 5G benefit through the you know the 5G. Well, let's come to customer experience. I wish to ask Kun was it about this. People expect quite a lot that the experience that we have from the deployment of 5G will make the world, I mean, even faster and more exciting. Can you elaborate from your point of view how the customer experience after the deployment of 5G will look like? Uh, if you look at the customer experience, we we, we talking two aspects. Mm -hmm. The first one is going to be like the user, normal user. Uh, from the era of 2G, 3Gs, and 4Gs, every single uh, development of the uh, technology uh, create the new speeds. New so speeds. 5G is going to be higher speeds. Mm -hmm. That means whatever higher speeds, it's going to be disrupts uh, the way you behave. Like even your smartphone is mm -hmm. going to be changed, right? Because you have a higher speed. From 3G to 4G, we don't think that the video is going to come in your phones. But 5G, uh, many people talking about uh, 4K video, 8K video, or AR, VR glass. But anyway, uh, once the speed is higher in that level, we don't think that the storage going to be in the local storage. Oh. So every single unit should be the thin client. That means you're buying the handsets. Before that, you're talking about 250, mm -hmm. uh, 250 k uh, mem uh, memory for gig or 64 gig or something like that. But in next era, that we don't talking about that one because every single one has to be stored in the cloud. Oh, I because see. you have it fast enough, you don't have to store on your local storage. Uh -huh. Even your office or, or uh, the business IT is going to be changed. So we, we, we're going to talk about that once 5G comes, uh, you will see the aspect of uh, the, hand, uh, the normal user subscriber for, for cellular mobiles and the industry is going to change. This is the one that aspect that we are facing in the normal users. But Mario is talking about uh, the, a lot of vertical industry is going to come, like uh, medical, health uh, industry, uh, or industrial 4.0 that's uh, in Korea that talking about. That's going to be impact to, to the customers and impact the way we, we behave and the way we are uh, in our daily life. Wow. Mm -hmm. By the way, in deploying the 5G here in any markets, important is the role of the government. Mm -hmm. And now I wish to ask also um, Kun Marius about the role of government in speeding up the rolling process of the 5G. If I understand correctly, <coughs> South Korea is the first country that deployed the 5G. And I don't know how many other nations have already deployed that. Can you elaborate that? Sure. I think that the government has a very critical role to play. The reason is because this is a complicated system and you need to interconnect three different worlds. 
So you have the world of the operator, you have the world of the regulator, you have the world of the IT, and then you also have the world of all the vertical industries. They all speak different languages, and they have to, somebody has to help them to come together. The first number one is that the regulators must give frequencies and not make it very expensive or very difficult to get these frequencies because they should see it as a reward that will come back to the country, number one. The second thing is that they must enable test beds and sandboxes where the companies can play. In the UK, I think now we have six, but there will also be a big one that was just uh, enabled in West Midlands where they will connect six or seven cities as a test bed mm -hmm. so that the people can test advanced use cases for healthcare, for public services, for manufacturing, etc. So, and the third one will be to provide easier access to sites. Because sites are difficult to get, they take a lot of time, and as we move more towards the higher density that 5G will require, the operators will need help to be able to get easier sites. Well, thank you. And alongside with the 5G, as Kun Sean here, there are several terms that we have heard. IoT and also the AI. And people might think, well, it seems that all of these three and some of the rest develop independently from each other. How can we form a complete new ecology to ensure that these will work together from your experience and from Cisco know-how? Do, do we work parallelly to ensure the new ecology in the future? Right, uh, you know, the 5G, the AI, IoT, they are very the interesting topic, you know. Those three things that make the big the synergy through the 5G together. You know, the Klaus Shuba, who is the uh, chairman of the Davos Forum, he mentioned that the AI, the 5G, and IoT, those three components will be the key component for the fourth industrial revolution. I totally agree with that. You know, 5G is just infrastructure from the telco perspective, and IoT will be the component on top of the 5G, and AI will be the controller to manage it from end to end. Those three things make the big synergy and change our life. To be frank, you know, AI, most of people mentioned that there's a limitation in there. Uh, three years ago, you know, AI, most of people mentioned that AI cannot come into the Go game. You know the Go game? Go game is the game that uh, two people play with the white stone and the black stone on oh, top of okay. you know, a small plate. And this is the most, one of the most, uh, you know, the complicated game in the human world. Most of people mentioned that AI cannot come into this game market. But three years ago, Google developed the AI for Go game, which is DeepMind. And Challenge, the human champion, which is who is the, you know, the Mr. Isedo. And then people expect that the people win it against the uh, DeepMind, but DeepMind won it. People lost it. And then people said that, you know, AI has already came into the, you know, the complicated market, but people keep saying that AI cannot come into the human's creativity area, which is, you know, the painting, the writing, and drawing. But two years ago, the, you know, the AI wrote one of the novel and attend, you know, the, the compete the noble contest, and then passed the first round. Any judge did not know this novel was written by AI. This is the situation, the, you know the Rust, which was developed by the Watson, IBM Watson, he was hired one of the biggest raw firm in the New York. And you know the, the, the world smith, he's AI. He wrote 4,000 articles in a minute in AP. This is the situation by AI. AI, you know, the IoT and 5G will make the synergy and change our life and, you know, the influence on our life continuously. Well, Kun, was it maybe you can contribute oh. your um, perspective upon that subject? Parallel development of IoT, AI, and the deployment of 5G. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you see the slide from Mario in the last session, that's uh, 5G is not just only enhanced mobile broadband that we mentioned about the, the, the high speed. Mm -hmm. It's going to be have another two aspects. One is for low latency that we discussed uh -huh. in the industrial parts. Another one we call the uh, massive 
Machine Type Communication MMTC MMTC This part is talking about the IoT uh, Before that we're talking about IoT in 4G We're talking that the elements in one square kilometers can support approximately 100k device In 5G they're talking about 1 million units From one That's mean in 5G rollouts uh, we expect that a lot of IoT is going to come. That means 5G is going to be the infrastructure for IoT. Uh -huh. So that means all the sensors in each indi individual, like uh, the smartwatch, mm -hmm. uh, the sensor for health, or something like that. It's going to be a lot. Mm -hmm. Even we're talking about the automated car. Uh, the automated car now itself, like Tesla, the cars can drive by itself. Autonomous driving. Yes, yeah. but the car is not talking to each other. Uh -huh. The car should be talked to the signal, like the traffic light. Oh, I see, okay. If it's red, the car have to stop. Today, the car is, uh, can go from point A to point B by itself. Mm -hmm. If it has some uh, pedestrian pass, it, it have to stop. Mm -hmm. But it have to speak to the other roadside to units. To other things, so to Yes, say. to the roadside units. That oh. means it's gonna have a lot of sensors a lot of things have to talk to each other. That's 5G gonna come. We're talking about 5G, IoT, that's gonna be the same thing. Mm -hmm. And AI, that's gonna be the one who make the decision makers. As Chan said, that it's gonna be the platform on top. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And once you got a lot of information from IoT, IoT is not just the way that you send the signal. Every single thing in the data from IoT have to be stored in the big data. Uh -huh. And we're going to collect them and we train it in the machine learning. So in that kind of technology, in 3GPP, that, no, GSMA, the association that uh, consists of all the operators, all the uh, vendors, uh, we name that uh, technology together as the Intelligence connectivity. This is a new word. That intelligent co connectivity. connectivity. That means the words consist of 5G, IoT, and AI together. Oh, that's the teamwork. Yes. Of the three. Uh huh. And that means it's going to be in your life. Once it happens in the daily life, it's going to be have a lot of suggestions to you. You you have to make decisions by yourself. The AI is going to help, and and from the data that they collect, it's going to be. Uh, suggest and like today you silly come and annoy you. Do you do you want something or something like that? But but it's getting more than that. Well, it sounds like a beautiful world <laughs> where algorithm, IoT, and intelligence will help all of us. Uh -huh. By the way, it sounds like the 5G will be establishing a new and a better world. Mm -hmm. But the point is, I wish to ask the two gentlemen here, uh, Krishan as well as Kun, what's it about this? What are challenging aspects about commercializing the 5G? Kunshan, could be, I mean, you can do that. Yeah, you know, the biggest challenge based on my experience is the TCO. You know, the telco has to, you know, the invest a lot of money to build, the, you know, the 5G infrastructure. For example, in Korea, for 4G, not the 5G, each telco has to spend the, four, the 7 billion for nationwide 4G coverage. But as you know it well, the 5G spectrum is different from the 4G. The telco has to invest 1.5 times higher than the 4G the TCO. But as, you, as everybody mentioned that, we don't have any the specific use, case, use cases for 5G. We have some use cases for 5G, but that's not enough to make the ROI from the market. Mm. Tel, for example, telco has to invest, you know, the AIS has to invest you know, the <laughs> 15 billion US dollar. <laughs> but you know, even though they invest 15 billion mm -hmm. for 5G, they, they don't get you know, the additional 15 billion revenue from the market. That's the biggest the challenge for 5G commercialization. And second one is you know, the regulation by the government. Mm. You know, the, one of the good use cases for 5G is a remote surgery, you know, smart healthcare. But that's not possible in Korea. Uh, that, that it is illegal. And third one is you know, the auction, the spectrum auction. As Korea has already you know, launched the 5G commercial, but most of country, they don't prepare for spectrum auction yet. If, and without the spectrum auction, the telco cannot launch the 5G commercial. That's you know, the main challenge for 5G the commercialization. Could we say maybe you have perspective upon that as well? Uh, yeah, it's going to be the, the 
mostly the same, but I'm going to emphasize for just two parts. The first one is with the spectrums. As, as we know in Thailand, that's, uh, the spectrum price is very high. <laughs> but 5G, the way that we're talking about 5G now is not just the handset or mobile phone. Not just it's, the handset, I uh -huh. like that, yeah. It's, it's not the version of the, just the handset, but it's impact all the industry. It's going to be like the commodity for everyone. It's going to be the nation infrastructure mm -hmm. to all the vertical industry have to plug in. So if you're thinking about that one, uh, it's the mandatory infra infrastructure for all the, all, all the industry. It's mandatory yes. for all industries. So the price of the spectrum mm. to invest for this mm -hmm. should be really low. You can see in China, they give it for free uh -huh. and ask the operator to invest, to build that infrastructure uh -huh. to the other industry. Also in Japan, they give all the spectrum for free. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, but for us, uh, yesterday we just got that 10, another 10 Oh, max. I read the news. Uh -huh, I yes. read the news as well. That with that high price. Okay. It's another, not free of charge. Yes, not free of charge. And, and another one is going to be like, uh, once we're talking about 5G, about vertical industry, another one is awareness of the industry also. Okay. It's not just us to roll out the networks. All the industry have to be aware and have to come research together and to find out the use case. It's not just uh, all the telco come and everyone come and, see and say that oh, the new technology is going to come. Mm. But this is the, the right period of time that 5G is going to come within two years in Thailand. Uh, last time that have digital disruption, everyone doesn't aware and its impact some industrial goals with, uh, don't have any, even have any way to, to, to do some other things. Mm. But now, you know that 5G have three aspects. Mm. Uh, the characteristic of the new technology gonna come and impact your business within two years. Mm. Come and think together. Come and think together, uh -huh. not only telecom. Not only telco, to build up or roll out the network. Comes and build together. The use case is the key. Mm. Use case is the key, I like that. Practical yeah. one, tangible examples yes. for that. Well, before I end, because the time is rather limited, I wish to ask the same question to Kun Marios. Of course, 5G seems to be a beautiful world. Are there any kind of challenges or any kind in, in other markets that you have experienced, UK, for example? There are many. Actually, 5G is full of challenges <laughs> okay. for, for almost everybody. However, as I said in my presentation, you can never go back anymore. We have to go down this road. It has started. I'll give you a few uh, challenges that are not very obvious, but when you start working with manufacturing, because I was working in the UK, mm -hmm. you start to see the actual problems. Number one is the TCO, but not only the network TCO. A manufacturer that I was working with must install 100,000 new sensors in their factory. 100,000 sensors? 100,000. They, they have 15,000, 15 kilometer production line, yes? So it's not possible to do with wires. So forget wires. So 5G is a given, yeah? Um, but the problem, these guys say, how much is going to be these sensors? The price going to, must come down. How much will be the communication module of this sensor? Mm. The price must come down. And something you and me would not think is the battery. If I need to go and change the battery for 100,000 sensors two times per year, it's not possible. So mm. the battery life must be very, very long. The last thing I just want to emphasize, the AI. I also agree that AI is the most critical investment that a country can be making mm. for itself. The most advanced country in Europe is Estonia. 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 The Estonia have established a minister of AI. Oh, who? And they, Unique and they, in the world, probably. They are, instead of investing in uh, other things, they say, we will invest here. And this is becoming very important because the AI will be the overarching system that will, in the end, control everything. So okay. I absolutely agree. Well, thank you very much. Well, once uh, Kunrosit mentioned about the 
5G will be coming into Thailand in the near future. Can I ask you or AIS, one of the leading telecom operator in the country, to share with us the, your plan, AIS plan for 5G in the next few years? Uh, we expect that 5G is going to come within two years. Two years. Two years. And in this stage, it's going to be our preparations. What we have plans? The first one is the spectrums. Spectrum. Yesterday is the, another stepping stone that we got the low band part. 700 megahertz. 700 megahertz. 5G to make uh, the three angles of the 5G com complete, we have to have three bands. Mm -hmm. High band for higher bandwidth, that means millimeter waves. Mid band for coverage. And high penetration is going to be the low band. So the bundle of this three band mm. going to fulfill all the 5G mm. uh, deployments. Yesterday, we got low band. That's mm -hmm. the one that we, we uh, part of our rollout. This is that is the widest, the 700? Yes, yes the widest. going to be the widest. The second thing is we have to build awareness. Mm. Since last year, uh, it has uh, built up uh, the showcase uh, for two months to show a lot of showcase, invite all the industry to come and see what the 5G can impact in the uh, industry. Mm. This is, uh, we, we create two months and to show a lot of things, what's going to happen in the next era that 5G is going to come. The third one is we are working together with NBTC and universities. Uh, we, we built up the sandbox to create it, uh, the labs for 5G. Uh, the labs consist of to create a use case together with the researcher in the university, uh, create the use case together with the industrial. Uh, today, we got another three MOU together with Konkan University, Chiang Mai University, and Song Club University. Before that, we got Chulalongkorn University and Gaset Sa University already. Mm. So we create five areas of the sandbox. So in that sandbox, we not only uh, re created the use case for the industry, we uh, as ourselves have to in, uh, research and do a lot of testing with our technology also. That's uh, what's to be served to our customer in mm. 5G. Uh, you know that. Uh, AS have our unique uh, service called NextG. That's the one that we have MPTCP technique that using uh, 4G together with Wi-Fi and creating that we call NextG in our trademark band. Oh, uh -huh. okay. In, we are successful to create that 5G together with Wi-Fi. Also, we call that NextG. I think we got the, the, the presentation slide, mm -hmm. and we can show that's the short clip to you. Switcher, do you have the multimedia ready? นี่คือการทดสอบการโทรครั้งแรกด้วย 5G จาก AIS และนี่คือ V V O L E D มาค่ะเฮ้ยวีวีลงติดได้ไงเนี่ยว้าวชัดไหมมันชัดมากเฮ้ยอันนี้ก็ชัดคือนี่มันชัดกว่าเดิมปะนี่ใช่ไหมที่เขาเรียกว่า Ultra HD Voice และนี่คือการทดสอบวิดีโอคอลมาค่ะฮะวีเห็นหน้าผมชัดไหมแกมันชัดมากอะไม่มีสะดุดเลยใช่ไหมครับสะดับโอเคเลยครั้งแรกในโลกกับการผสมผสานความเร็วอีกขั้น 5G กับซูเปอร์ไวฟ์เป็น AIS Next G Plus ความเร็วขนาดนี้ความเร็วของโลกอนาคตที่ AIS ทดสอบจริงได้แล้วครั้งแรกในไทยเพื่อนำประเทศก้าวสู่โลกดิจิทัลอย่างเต็มรูปแบบ AIS This can be the world first Wow that's full throttle of speed <laughs> Well I wish we have couple of hours more but unfortunately the session has to end here and I really hope that all of us really share the insights for all of you therefore big round of applause for our contributors here Thank you. Thank you very much for having shared with us your insight. Thank you very much.